good to be with y'all. Just a few things before we get started. If you have not yet gone to our website, www.remnantchurch.net, please do. If you're new with us for the first time just visiting, uh, please go to our website. Read about our, our ministries here, our pastors, our visions uh, here at the Remnant Church. You can download our app. Uh, we have all our events there. Stay connected with us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. So we are everywhere on social media you could possibly be. So go check us out there as well. We will take up our tithes and offering here in just a little while. If you don't do cash or check, we do everything virtual. We have two different giving ways. You can text to give. You can scan the QR code. Either is fine. If you have not filled out a Connect card, please find an usher. Where are my ushers at? In the back, back, back right there. Find an usher. Get a Connect card from them. Fill it out. We want to stay connected with you as well. All right. We're going to be doing things a little bit different this morning. We've got some special, special things planned, and we're super, super, super excited. So, to start us off... Our lovely little Kids Connect and Tiny Remnants are going to come on up here. They've got something special planned for y'all this morning. They're super excited. Let's give them a hand as they're coming on up here. It's exciting to see them. We don't see them a lot anymore. They all look so nice and spiffy. And while they're getting up here and getting lined up, I want to introduce to y'all our children's pastor, Miss April Butler. Give her a round of applause. She's going to talk just for a few minutes about Kids Connect and everything they've been doing down there. Good morning, Remnant family. Good morning. I'm not going to see y'all a lot, but just take a few minutes to tell you about Kids Connect. We are ages 4 to 11. We meet every Sunday. We have praise and worship, just like you do. We're jumping. We're we're pumped up every Sunday. We started out when our launch happened, and we had um, 20 children that Sunday. I think it was 20. We have grew. We have all of our children here today. They are so excited to perform for you. They have learned Bible verses in the past couple of weeks. They are learning the books of the Bible uh, through golf balls, which... You may find weird, but if you come watch us, you'll see how it happens. They're learning a lot. They pray for you each week. They do a lot of stuff. So these children are getting poured into each week. Uh, it's myself, Miss Laura Berry, and Miss Dana Anderson. They are doing an amazing job. They work so hard. If you want to volunteer, you want to be a part of this, please see us. We would love for you to come and help and be a part of it. Our children are awesome to work with. We have fun each week, and we just want to show you what all we can do in our Christmas songs. Amen. Thank you so much for your support and for loving us and for supporting us.
blessing. All right, they're going to hang out with us for a little bit this service. And next up, I would like to introduce to you our worship pastor, Mr. Jesse Childers. Good morning, good morning. Y'all know this is not my comfort zone, so y'all bear with me. We are so happy to see everybody this morning um, and supporting our choir. We're so excited. Um, we started this choir about a month or so ago, maybe a little over a month ago. And um, anybody in here ever seen Sister Act? Yeah. yeah. It's okay, be honest. It's okay. Y'all ain't got to be embarrassed. I'll see them. So... You don't expect it to go so smooth. You expect, you know, people to come in here and just be hollering and everything like that, but that is not the case for us, and I'm so thankful. No, seriously, y'all don't lie. Because if it would have been, I'd have been home and cried and asked God and begged God, what have I done? What have I done? But anyway, so without further ado, can I have my choir come up? And y'all, we want you to worship with us this morning. I know this is, it might feel a little bit different, but... We're still about the king's business and we're going to worship. So we ask y'all worship with us, all right? Now, I want y'all to y'all worship with us. I want you to sing, too. <laughs> 
believe it. All right? Let's sing it like we mean it now. Walk down. 
we ain't fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. It's already been won. All I got to do is stand up and declare victory over every situation in my life. Over cancer, victory's already been won. Over depression, victory's already been won. The hurt man is ready. Here we go.
this simple mighty son's name we pray and we confess all things and everybody said amen, amen. amen. come on you may be seated in the presence of the Lord amen y'all ready Yes. Okay, I got about 15 minutes to see what you do. Oh, I got 15 minutes just to get started. Okay. That hammer takes care of itself and up. Amen. So, I, I've titled my message down the road. Oh, quick at you. Look at somebody say, flip the script. That's the title of my message this morning because I love how if we look at the whole Bible, if we look at the Bible in, in all terms, what Jesus and God really do throughout the course of the book is he flips the script. Right, right. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? He's good at taking things that look dim and flipping, flipping them. He's good at taking lives that look like they're heading down the wrong road. He's good at taking things that look dark and, and flipping them. Right. Y'all should be shouting this morning that he can take your situation that don't look too good. He, he can take your situation that may not be the best report. He, he's a perfectionist. He's professional at flipping things. When the world says yes, he says no. Come on. So pick up with me in the book of Luke in the first chapter. <coughs> Luke 1 and 26. Now I know some of y'all have been ready for this message because we're going to learn something truly about the birth of Christ that is hidden in plain sight. Amen. Amen. What you have Luke 1 and 26, wave back you like Forrest Gump. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Hold a place marker there. Now let's go to Genesis 6. Genesis 6. Amen. When you're there. Jesus come onto the earth to flip the screw. Here in Genesis 6, what we have is one of the many falls of creation. Of, of, of mankind and it says when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive and they took as their wives any they choose we, we talked about this last Thursday do you remember yes. Yes. then the Lord said my spirit shall not always abide in man forever for he is flesh his days shall be a hundred and twenty years and the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards when the sons of God came into the daughters of man and they bore children unto them these were mighty men who were of old men of renown go with me to the book of Luke in the first chapter See, as we look at this chapter number six in Jewish history and Jewish theology, this was a negative. This was a thing that happened that was out of order. How many knows that God works in order? We have to have order and structure in all things that we do. God never operates outside the boundaries of order. His order sometimes does not appear like our order, but he operates in structure and order and boundaries. But in Genesis 6, we have the sons of God, the Bible plainly says that they left their heavenly place and they come down because they seen the beautiful women of mankind. And they started something proportionally negligent. These women started producing what was called the Nephilim, giants, evil creatures. Creatures, because the Lord says that their thoughts are continually evil. So here we have a negative thing that has transpired, and all of Jewish customs would know this story. Luke, are you with me? Listen to what God's going to do. He's going to flip the script. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth yeah. to a virgin, Baroth, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Oh. I want you to underline that. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, old favored one. The Lord 
is with you. Yes. Now, I want you to keep in mind something that would be very clear to, to Mary here in this story was the Genesis chapter 6 story. Right. Come on. Come on. Yes. See, I know that the Genesis chapter 6 and this whole Deuteronomy 32 worldview thing it, it is obscured because for so long, Miss Jane, we don't understand, so we skip over. Right. Right. Miss Jane, what, you mean Miss Jane? <laughs> oh, Miss Jane. Yes, you do. I got landmarks. I got landmarks. <laughs> you mean Miss Jane? <laughs> Miss Jane, you grew a beard. Verses in Bibles that I call skip over verses. We don't understand it, we don't know it, so we skip over it. Yes. And it has led to where the church is now. Don't get me started on that here on Christmas Eve, right? But Genesis 6 in that story has been a skip over your chapter because we don't understand it, so we're just not going to mess with it and we're going to act like it's not written in the book. Right, right. But a true Jewish person like Mary and Joseph was right. would have known very well chapter number six in the book of Genesis. Right. And when this angel appeared to her, that would have been the first thing that popped up into her mind. Oh, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> the last time this happened, it didn't end so good. But see, God has a way of saying, you know what? Y'all screwed this thing up so many times. Just get out of my way because now I've got to fix Okay, the lesson to be learned. Sometimes you've got to get. Yes. Dr. Rob Parson preached a message one time, and I hope he watches and likes this. But he said his title of his message was Give Up. And everybody looked at him like he had 10 heads coming off of his neck because his, he was saying, just give up. Just give up. Sometimes the best thing you can do in your life is give up and get yes. gone. Yes. And just say, Lord, I can't do this. I can't do this when I have too many more. Give up trying to fix it yourself and let God do something. You see, there was a recipe. Yes. Mary, a virgin. How many knows that he had to come from something pure? Yes. Something that no man had to fight. Oh man, the Bible says that he'd be a lamb without spot, without blemish, without innocence. Yeah. So we come to this young girl that was probably 14 or 15 years old. Honey, we got some grown women that we can't even get. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And if the story was wrote today, 55% of the time, Joseph ain't even in the story no more. That's right. Go ahead. He comes to this young lady, Gabriel appears, and he speaks to her. And I'm sure the first thing on her mind was when the sons of God came into the yes. daughters yes. of men and right. they created a race. Yes. See, Jewish theology would have harped on this chapter in the book of Genesis. How many know sometimes God has to go the same avenue, but he's going to flip things in your life? Right. Yes. 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 Come on. That's right. Andrew, I, I, I don't know for sure, but this is how I like to paint it in my picture, that God's sitting back and saying, no, 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 what's me doing this time? Because we only see a repeat happening. But God says, where you went and meant for evil. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ooh, what meant to take out my people? I, I like it when God looks down on you and he says that thing that the enemy had plotted against you to take you out, I'm fixing to use the same thing, but it's going to be manifested in that way. I know that you've got a testimony in your life of how the enemies talked to your mind and, and talked you into anxiety and depression and sickness and suicide and all these things, but God says, I'm going to use the same mind and I'm going to use it for glory unto me. So listen, let's read on. Come on. Let's read on. So he says, Greetings, O favored one, Yahweh, capital L. Yahweh is with you. But she was greatly troubled. Why was she greatly troubled? Because she knows Genesis 6 in the back of her mind. And, and, and we see this through Old Testament over and over and over again. When the angel appeared before Joshua and Joshua bowed to the angel, the angel told him to stand up. Don't you bow down to me. Right. Huh? Because this is a major player here in the biblical story. So no doubt she is greatly troubled. Right. 
If we look through the story of Genesis 6, these things, these sons of God, these they didn't come down and ask. Uh, they just found one that looked good to them, and they took what they wanted. Right, right. Said the Lord is with you, but she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. Yeah. Mm. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor yeah. with God. Amen. Yeah. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua or Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Now, now let's just tarry right there on that two words, the Most High. See, Gabriel from the message to Mary he said the last time this this went down, it wasn't in order because it wasn't the most high. But this time, you're going to conceive in your virgin womb, your pure womb, the son of the most high. How many know there's no thing, no person, no yeah. deity, no yeah. spiritual yeah. being that is higher than him? Amen. Listen, let's drive this thing home right here. Is that okay? Yeah. He will be great. I like this part right here, Jesse, because he can fail in no other areas, really, but this one. Because he cannot, he cannot fail to be great. He cannot cease to be great. Brother Mike, I had a professor teach me one time that even if he would mess up, it would be right because of who he is. Y'all hear what I'm saying? How good you got to be to do that. Even his mistakes are great. If he was to make them. Right, right. He shall be called great. And will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne. Yeah. Of his father David. Yeah. Right, right. And he will reign over the house of Jacob. For just a little while. Right. And he will reign over the house of Jacob. For a lot of amount of time. No, 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 no. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He says, when I take my place as king, when I take my seat at the throne, it's going to be forever. It's a never-ending thing. And I like it because a lot of people might change their mind about you when the sun comes up tomorrow. The baker might change his mind about you tomorrow when the sun comes up. But the God that you serve does not, will not, cannot change his mind. It does not matter what tomorrow brings, he's going to be the same. Forever. That means, and, and, and here we go. For y'all that don't know, Jesus was not born on December 25th. Amen. Amen. That's, I know that sometimes y'all y'all just went back to your childhood finding out the, about the big fat man in the red suit. Sorry, is But here, here's what I want to give you. And this is hard for people to grasp, Brother Mike. But from that moment when his conception was, from the moment, and we're going to get on into this thing, but from the moment that God started to speak to a virgin named Mary, there was a shift that began to take place. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Y'all want to know when I think his birthday is? Because I'm going to get 5,000 people asking me at the door. Well, December 25th was his birthday. When was his birthday? <laughs> Tishra 1 in the Jewish calendar. So, now this might blow your mind. September 11th, 3 BC. Wow. Y'all know some pretty crazy things have transpired of late on September 11th. And you know why? It is probably because they know our word better than we do. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, right. Tishra 1 was the Jewish New Year. They believe it's when God spoke creation into existence 
They believe that it was Noah's birthday, but it also they believe by reading and calculating the star of David that it was also Jesus' birthday, which makes perfect sense when it says, so as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. But there was something when, when God began to speak to Mary and he began to put in place a plan that was already established. Right, right, right. September 11th, 3 BC, or whenever the plan was initiated, Brother Chase, he already had you on his mind when he spoke. I wish somebody would grab that. See, he went through the corridors of time and he said, You know what, Brother Kenny? You're going to need a Savior because the law can't do it for you. So at that moment, things begin to line up and shift in your future. Yes. Oh, man. Praise the Lord. Yes. He said, he shall reign over the house of Jacob, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? Uh oh. The thing that made her doubt herself was the thing that God was looking to use. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The thing that you doubt about yourself is the same thing that God's looking for to you. Right? You may say, well, I have a disability. God say, I know I created you with it because I'm going to use you to do that disability. You might say, well, I can't speak the best. God said, I created your mouth and you're the thing. The same thing that you've been doubting about yourself, the same thing that Mary doubting about herself. Mary said, how's that going to be? I'm a virgin. And yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Huh? You've been writing yourself off because of a physical condition that you have. But God says, if you just let me, I'll be glorified through it. Huh? That's powerful. Uh, your own doubts. The things that you see when you stand in the mirror that you hate the most. Come on. Wow. God's saying those are the same things I'm going to use. Amen. Amen. Because I remember the Old Testament says you are marvelously yes. Yes. and wonderfully yes. made. Yes. Uh, you want to look at somebody and say, I'm a designer original. Belly and all. Huh? Come on, bro. She said, how is this going to be, young virgin? Listen, if, if we read cohorts, Christian, the Valor College cohorts, y'all want to understand this. And it really takes place in the Pauline theology, which is all the books of the Bible that Paul wrote, which is a bunch of them. But one thing that Paul does continuously is he lists groupings of sin over and over and over again. And guess what's number one at all? Sexual immorality. Come on, come on. Oh, no. Because Genesis 6, that they left their heavenly place and come down and forced themselves right. Right. to women. And they defiled them. And through that process, evil, more evil was created. But God says, I'm going to come down, but yet I'm not going to defile you. Come on. Maybe we just got in the water just a little bit too deep. But when God comes into you, he is not going to defile you, but he purifies you. And, and, and wait, wait a minute, don't get too excited yet. Well, well, when these other things come down and they created something evil and something demonic, when Jesus was, was when God come down and overshadowed and he come into her, he created life. Without defilement. So, so you see, he's saying, I'm fixing, I'm fixing to flip the script. Yeah. Because these other women, I'm sure that more than half of them, I don't even know if they, they survive pregnancy and labor and all these things, but at the end of it, they were defiled. Yes. Yes. By customs, by today's customs and all these things, you're defiled. Yes. But when I do something, yes. Yes. I'm facing the flipping. Yes. Because you're going to be highly favored through what I do. Yes. Everything else brings death, but I'm fixing to implant life into you. That's why I love that song, Mary. Did you know? I'm bad for being good. Love it. Listen, she said, How is this going to happen? I'm a virgin. Right? I don't think we need to go in detail about that. And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. 
Now listen, one thing that we got to get is consent. Uh, and, and a lot of times I think we bypass young Mary in the story. Listen, though, the Holy Spirit will come upon you in the power of the Most High. There's that word again. Yes. He was reassuring her the thing that's fixing to happen to you is not happening by any other means but Yahweh of Yahweh's, by the Most High, by the big man himself. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy. I want to give you just a little bit of Hebrew here. Go back to the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow. I want you to underline as I'm fixing to drive this thing home here. Underline the word overshadow you. Y'all got it over? Underline? Go with me to the book of Genesis in the first chapter just real quick. You don't have to go. I'll read it to you if you don't want to go. In the beginning, as God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form, and it was void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, this word here for hovering, Brother Mike, is the same word translated in Luke 1. For others. The Ruach of God, the Spirit, the life giving Spirit that is so strong, Christian, He released it and God said, Let there be. And He started putting things into order. But before it happened, His Spirit hovered over the face of the deep. Yes. All right. And he created yes. life. Yes. Hmm. Well, he's fixing to do it again. Yes. Um, yes. Amen. Yes. Because he took something that was virgin, which means it was empty. It was without. It was void. It, had, it, 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 was, it was just barren at that point in time. And he said, I'm fixing to do something again. I'm fixing to place my spirit over top of you. And it's going to hover over top of you again. And it's, it's going to impart in you life. Colossians says, through him are all things, and in him all things yes. are held together. Yes. I like it. Because just as he did it in Genesis, he did it again. Don't y'all understand when Jesus comes, the clock started over? Yeah. Yeah. That's why John wrote said six days before the Passover. Y'all know what happened on the Passover? They crucified my king named Jesus. And, and at that point in time was the seventh day, right? And he entered back into rest. Yes. Yes. That same life-giving power, though, what I like about it, Jesse, is it not only hovers over Mary anymore. Are you glad? Come on now. Listen. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called holy. Mm. Would you stand with me? God's known for flipping the spirit. Yeah. Up until Thursday, I was going to preach on Rahab and an interesting story how God can take a harlot and smack her right in the middle of the lineage of Christ. And I was going to call it change the narrative. Because really, you're powerless this morning to fix issues on your own. Brother Blake, we can try. But I have realized that the more I try to fix things, the more I mess them up. But a gift was given. Maybe it wasn't on December 25th. I understand that. 
why I throw some people off on Facebook and be posting happy birthday Jesus on 9 11. <laughs> Ain't that like the enemy there to take your mind and put it somewhere else? Yeah. Well, yeah. But if I choose to celebrate with y'all also today, if I accept a gift that was given, yeah. and the story is deeper than what we realize, <laughs> if I told everybody Jesus wasn't born in a barn. Oh, oh. I really love some of y'all's minds. I, 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 I told Elizabeth I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And we got this broad misconception. Number one, David, I mean, Joseph and Mary was of the house of David, which means they somebody. They from royalty. Number two, she's pregnant. Nobody puts a pregnant lady in the barn. Well, maybe in our culture today they do. But the point is, is on that day, the things in your future begin to line up. But there's a key that you have to have to unlock. Your future's already there. It's already in line. It's already been set in order. But you got to have the key of Christ, the blood of Christ, to truly operate in what God has ordained for you. So, yeah, we celebrate the Senator This is the time that you choose to take in the greatest gift. I don't care what's waiting on you under the tree. Oh, can I be cliche? It's about the gift that was on the tree. I don't care how good Grandma screen beans are. September 11, 3 BC, I would say, is when I think it was. You would give them eternal life. So as I close with him bowed and eyes closed, here's, here's my heart's cry this morning. Yeah. 
I know that we're here on a Christmas, uh, whatever we call it today, service. But the most important thing is to, to lead somebody yeah. to the cross. Brother Mike, his birth was immaculate. Yeah. His birth was out of this world, and it was deeper than just a manger. It was spiritual warfare. But his death, and more importantly, his resurrection, is the power that we have.